Is piracy on the internet really destroying the entertainment industry? I'm Peter Lapman, reporting for Business Day Live. I'll be speaking with media reporter Amy Chozik about the battle over anti-piracy legislation, but first, a look at today's headlines. There's been another delay in the bailout deal for Greece, in spite of concessions by the European Central Bank and the IMF on a 130 billion euro rescue package. Smartphone maker Nokia says it will cut 4,000 jobs in Finland, Hungary, and Mexico. It said that most of that production will move to China and South Korea. And Sprint reported a fourth quarter loss, continuing almost five straight years in the red. But the company has now started selling the iPhone and is betting that the popular device will help attract new customers. The entertainment industry recently sponsored online anti-piracy legislation, but lawmakers abandoned those bills after a public outcry led by Silicon Valley. Joining me to talk about the controversy is Amy Chozik. Hey, Amy. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I look up something on Wikipedia, and the site is essentially blacked out. Yeah. And people tell me that that had something to do with this fight. Help us understand what's going on here. Absolutely. The Wikipedia blackout was part of this huge protest online against these two pieces of kind of arcane legislation in Washington called SOPA and PIPA that were basically written by the media and entertainment industries to combat online piracy, illegal downloads of movies, video games, TV shows that they believe is severely hurting the industry. Huh. So uh, your, your article is a very interesting one. In the battle, on one side you have the entertainment industry, on the other side you have the internet community. And you know some people are kind of mixed as to where they come out on it. I read uh, Tim O'Reilly, a technology books publisher. He sides with the entertainment industry. He says most of the people who are downloading unauthorized copies of our books would never have paid us for them anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think that quote gets exactly to the philosophical difference in this debate, that you have media on one side that says stealing a, a pirated version of a movie is exactly like going into a store and still stealing a physical object. And then you have the tech side saying, well, no, it's not. Even if you downloaded Dark Knight, which was the most pirated movie ever, it was still one of the highest grossing box office films. And they point to some of those examples and say, it's not like stealing a physical object. You can still sell them. They even say, maybe you get a pirated song and then you go see the concert. So it's hard to calculate the economic impact of piracy, the tech community says. And each media company has a different view of it, right? So you talk about Comedy Central, yep. which every day makes uh, you know, the Jon Stewart show mm -hmm. and the Colbert Report available for free. Yep. Well, that's an interesting example. One of the heads of, of, of digital initiatives at Viacom you know, showed the company how much South Park was being pirated. And he said, we've got to make this available, you know, on our own terms. You go to our website and see it. We can sell ads. So they do. They make Colbert Report. They make Daily Show. They make South Park. They make those available, but you have to go to their websites. And that has drastically cut down on piracy. At the same time, those are not shows that you're going to go buy, like, the 10th season of The Daily Show on DVD. Those shows have a very short shelf life. You want to see them. You know, they're newsy. So it's a little bit different than, say, Big Bang Theory, which Warner Brothers sold for a million dollars an episode right. in syndication. You want to protect those properties. Right. You have this great anecdote in your article. Uh, Fred Wilson, a noted venture capitalist, mm -hmm. wanted to watch the Knicks game the mm -hmm. other night on Time Warner Cable. MSG is in a dispute um, mm -hmm. with Time Warner Cable, so he couldn't watch it, right. so he streamed it illegally through the internet onto his television, and then he went on a, his blog and bragged about it. Right. But, you know, so how is that different than him going into Models and stealing a Knicks jersey? Well, I think Time Warner Cable would say it's not different at all. <laughs> but I think Fred Wilson really speaks to how uh, we as consumers have become so in, almost entitled, you know, and used to finding what we want when we want it. And if we can't, we're going to find a way. So it just really puts the impetus on media companies to make this stuff available. You know, get it out on your own terms, fine, charge something, sell ads but in some way make it available because otherwise people like Fred Wilson and the web savvy people, they're going to find it somewhere. Yeah, so to the extent that the media companies and the internet community yeah. are at loggerheads, mm -hmm. how do you see this thing playing out? Well, it's, it's it will be really interesting to watch because on one hand, you know, the Netflix of the world, they need content. You're not going to pay that subscription fee if you can't find your favorite shows. But on the other, I think uh, the entertainment industry is looking at what happened to the music industry and they're trying to, you know, learn from those mistakes. And so they, you know, they're slowly making their content available. We're seeing some deals, um, some streaming deals, Comcast and Disney, you know, struck a 10-year agreement where you can watch Disney or ESPN on any device anywhere in or, in or outside the home. And we're going to see more of that, but it's going to be uh, tricky. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Thanks Amy. Thanks for having me.
That's all for today. Please remember to join us online at nytimes.com for our continuing coverage. I'm Peter Lapman reporting for Business Day Live. Thanks for watching.